Hi, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and I've got a couple of great Bob Dylan concert posters to show you today. And of course, only a hardcore Dylan fan would say that because they actually involve a great deal of talent that played at the Newport Folk Festivals in the mid-60s, 1964 and 65. Dylan played Newport in 63 as well. There's a separate poster for that, which I'll blog um, some other time. A totally different design, but the 64 and 65s are very similar, so I'm putting them together on the same blog. So here we have, you know, it's um, the standard 14 by 12, a lot of writing on the back of this one. Standard 14 by 22 inch cardboard, and a plain, simple poster. Obviously, I would call it understated. It's, um, it's a typical festival poster, perhaps, where Rather than splashy graphics and everything and day glow colors and a big effort to get people's attention, it's made more to like just impart information about all the players at the festival. Um, you know, the Newport Folk Festivals, starting in the very late 50s up through the 60s and so forth, sort of had a life of their own, very much a built-in clientele base. And, and basically these two posters just help you pick which days you wanted to attend if you weren't going every day. So this is the uh, 1964 one, and it's, um, <clears throat> you know, these are all... Let's see, this is uh, Newport Folk Festival. They, they have that logo there, that guitar and hand logo, that sketch. They both have that. And um, it's, as I said, it's understated, but it lists all the people. Interesting font style there. Um, zero in on one particular name there a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, besides Bob Dylan, there's a lot of significant names on this 64 Newport poster. It's got uh, Joan Baez, Johnny Cash, Judy Collins, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Pete Seeger and the Staple Singers, as an example, um, and that's just you know sort of in the folk and, and mainstream, and the bluegrass areas represented by Doc Watson, and uh, you've got Mississippi John Hurt on the blues tip, so every uh, you know a lot of different kind of musics uh, represented, but they all had a common cause. The um, especially at Newport, especially at the time, the star star making machinery was really toned way down. This was just um, everybody was in it for to celebrate music and the roots of the music and so forth, and uh, the organizers obviously made no attempt to, uh, to hype Dylan. His name is just the same size as everybody else's in between the Clancy Brothers and the Freedom Group. So, you know, he's just, he's just line-listed like everybody else. But what's especially cool about this poster for me is that I've been a Dylan fan my whole life since the late 60s. And so, you know, I've seen him dozens of times over, you know, three or four decades. I'm just a real, real strong Bob fan and collector. And this poster represents the, the Sunday evening performance here is my personal favorite Bob Dylan performance in his entire career that I've ever heard. Um, he did, he came out and instead of doing Blowing in the Wind and the times they were changing and stuff, he came out in July of 1964 and did four new songs. Typical Dylan, you know, balginess, if you will. No crowd pleasing, pleasing favorites, but four new songs. And he finally... Uh, after those four, he came back for an encore with Joan Baez and finally did a familiar song the audience would know, and that's with God on our side, on a duet with Baez. But of the four new songs, um, it's interesting, three of them were from his next album, Another Side of Bob Dylan, and he even did one that was two albums away from bringing it all back home. He did Mr. Tambourine Man, a very early performance in the summer of 64. But... Um, and I'm talking, by the way, about his closing uh, Sunday night performance. I don't actually I don't know if he closed the festival, but his Sunday night performance, that was his big headlining thing. He also did, um, he did a workshop appearance during the day, I think it was on Friday. And that's the way Newport worked. They had lots of daytime workshop things where stars would jump up and common folk and everything and would perform. But this was the real formal gig. And so, the, uh, you know, especially of those four new songs, especially on Chimes of Freedom, his, uh, his enthusiasm, his freshness, his vitality, his voice just soars. It's just such terrific, terrific Bob. And, and luckily, everybody, not just bootleg collectors, but everybody can hear it because Chimes of Freedom from this poster and this, uh, this gig was released on the No Direction Home soundtrack. Of course, the Martin Scorsese documentary on Dylan in the early days. So that makes this poster really special for me. It represents Bob's greatest performance ever, just in my opinion, and of course, a lot of people would insist he needs to be electric for his greatest performance ever. A perfect segue to the 65 Newport poster, which um, is very similar in design, as you can see. Um, interestingly, this poster they made in both red and white versions, and this, of course, being a red version. And so this is one year later, 1965. There's that logo talked about. And, um, and this time, the, um, 
The names of the artists are printed in in a regular font. They're not drawn in in an artistic font like 64. But, uh, and it's interesting too because this one, see right there, has the year on it, 1965, as does the 64. A lot of people think, uh, oh, original concert posters never gave the year, but sometimes they did. It just depends on who laid out the poster and what they wanted to do. And once again, in 65, a year later, you had stellar talent, you know, all over the poster besides Bob. And, and once again, these are just the 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. evening formal concert appearances. Uh, Dylan did a uh, workshop appearance, let's see, I think on Saturday. And actually some of that, or perhaps the whole song, I can't remember, appears in the festival movie a black and white movie made of uh, this, the Newport Post Festival in 65. But all of that aside, if you're watching this video, surely you know that Sunday night, right there it says at 8 p.m., among other people appearing, but Dylan's the first one listed, is when he plugged in and did his first ever electric performance, um, the, the first one of his career. Of course, everybody knows that. I'm just sort of, <laughs> I have to say it because I'm holding the poster, for heaven's sake. Um, and, you know, his single, Like a Rolling Stone, which I like to think would change pop culture, would change the world, had just been released five days earlier. So it was just this magical electrical time. And, um, you know, most of us series collectors have bootlegs of the performance, either video or audio. And uh, Maggie's Farm from this performance was released on the No Direction Home soundtrack as well. But, um, and then, of course, there's also a DVD release of the movie festival, which has lots of this stuff on it. But... These two posters, I mean, you know, a yellow and a red, a 64 and a 65, a folk festival with tons of other performers. Dylan probably performed, what, 1% of the time. But in my eyes, they're very special posters. They're great. Once again, you got the 14 by 22 cardboard. This one's red on both sides. I mean, with the yellow one, you have, for, from my vantage point, Dylan's best performance ever. And here you have his first electric performance ever. I mean, what a couple of killer historic great posters. So hope my enthusiasm showed. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at showing it. So, and I hope you enjoyed these. Bob fans and just curious music fans, thanks for stopping in and looking. And um, it's going to be tough to top these, certainly on the Dylan tip, but I'll see what I can do next time. So have a great day, and thanks again for stopping by. Take care.